academy members and friends it gives me great pleasure in inviting you all for the second webinar for our academy students and the topic for this time is occlusion occlusion is always considered very boring as far as theoretically considered but a very important element in day to day clinical practice but unfortunately occlusion has always been taken for granted or ignored when you are doing fixed dental processes so that's why i chose this topic and kept it completely clinically oriented when i had to choose a speaker for this topic i had no second thoughts i had to choose dr chandler mohan he's a good friend of mine and to introduce him to you i can tell you or narrate this simple example in our ug days when he was a final year student he was asked to give a demonstration on class 2 amalgam carving for the postgraduate students in ods department that's his caliber and people very close to him know that he is always a person who believes in best or nothing who never compromises on the quality he is a consultant prosthodontist and he is right now an assistant professor in velamal medical college so without wasting much time let me straight away take you to the webinar by dr chandilaran mohan thank you and stay updated for future webinars a very good day to all my friends here for this second access webinar i am dr sendil clinician from madurai most of all a ardent learner like you all and i am here to speak on a very elusive topic occlusion ever wondered where this occlusion comes which branch of dentistry occlusion belongs to right it is it is a quite a elusive and elusive topic so now i would want you to take a look at the following pictures and see if there's any if you strike any similarity yes they are all basic fundamental needs that are very essential for the life but are often taken for granted often misused often abused just for the simple reason that they have a very high tolerance level occlusion these fundamental factors which are very essential for life but is also taken for granted so occlusion all our might all the gizmos technos mumbo jumbos all the books lab work everything boils down to this one word occlusion if you think about it we just don't realize prosto ortho endo perio uh, all other clinical subjects even non clinical subjects the whole of dentistry is targeting towards four words aesthetic healthy stable occlusion not teeth it is aesthetic stable healthy occlusion occlusion is that functional part of your teeth which is very important right now we are we have to understand this this occlusion is fundamental as i already told you it is often overlooked it is seldom problematic it does not cause problems very often because it has a very high adaptive potential adaptive potential means it tries to accommodate itself into the conditions available in the body without giving much of a consequence how does this occlusion adapt itself now all of us would have done a lot of restorative work fillings crowns fpds and sometimes we come across some part of this problems which we attribute to occlusion and usually it is always somebody else to take care of that always somebody else to blame for it and most of the times it tries to resolve itself because occlusion itself is a very dynamic entity now if you have crown on the posterior teeth or generally a occlusal instability or a occlusal interference in the posterior teeth one option is 
the body identifies this high point or an interference in the occlusion and tries to grind that part of the teeth so that it eliminates that occlusion sadly so in the process you might have attrisions you might have fracture of the teeth fracture of the crown decimentation of the crown fracture of the root and sometimes also fracture of the restorations in this video you can see that how uh, interference causes the crown to flex and decement it sir in a case of a weakened teeth like a restored teeth if you have high point that might result in the fracture of the crown because the crown is already weakened by the preparation of the teeth it might also lead to fracture of the or vertical fracture of the root another possibility how the body tries to overcome this interference is a altered position of the mandible now the altered position of the mandible results in the muscles not being in a state of rest or the muscles being in a different position so that to accommodate this change in position of the mandible now these muscles are constantly working and this constant work of the muscles results in muscle spasm and muscle muscle pain sometimes also to it might also result in bruxism clenching and other parafunctional habits so we can see that occlusal problems results in symptoms which range from a simple hypersensitivity wear of the teeth abfraction abfraction for all those who don't know abfraction is the flexing of the anterior teeth or the posterior teeth because of occlusal discrepancy results in the chipping away of enamel because the enamel is not flexible the dentin is flexible the bending of the teeth will cause a saucer shaped defect which is found in the cej so that is abfraction it might also cause an attrition of teeth because of bruxism trauma from occlusion fracture of teeth crown and root as i told you before mobility of teeth bruxism clenching tmj pain and muscle pain to so, sum it up so no, these are not scientific statements but they tend to sound logically true occlusal diseases are top destructive dental disorder you know considering all those diseases i told you before i think it is a destructive dental disorder it contribute top contributing factor to tooth loss top reason for needing extensive dentistry top reasons associated with the discomfort of the masticatory system because it involves the muscles and the joint top factor in post ortho instability post ortho if you don't have a correct occlusion it, the occlusion becomes instable you collapse and all that the top reason for tooth sensitivity and soreness top mix missed diagnosis leading to unnecessary antibiotic and endodontic therapy because you have unidentified pain somewhere some teeth usually we'll just give antibiotics or you open up the teeth and top undiagnosed dental disorder most of the time it goes undiagnosed so why is it important to know occlusion so occlusion by itself as i told you it's already very delusive or elusive we know that it is a self limiting disease it is self adapting disease and rarely patient comes to you with a complaint that is the reason why occlusion is so rarely dealt with the problems in occlusion and the occlusion as a topic rarely it is those problems that we treat we don't attribute those problems to occlusal instability now as a clinician who is taking care of clinic who's, which is running for about 30 years i've come across people with 25 year old amalgam fillings 15 year old acrylic bridges and so on and so forth and i have wondered how is it possible was amalgam so strong in those days or was acrylic of such quality in those days it is not like that the thing they have come to know is once your process is or once your restoration is in harmony with the existing occlusion once it can adapt once it can change along with the natural occlusion it is bound to stay in the mouth for so long so good occlusion gives you stability stability means less changes in occlusion over time less changes provides longevity of your restoration longevity of the restoration if you continuously keep doing long standing restorations then you are able to predict this material this type of tooth is going to stay for so long you are able to predict 
now once you have that predictability in your hand it increases your confidence and once you are confident you are able to predict something to the patient and it happens then the patient has better confidence in the operating dentist so that is the core reason why as a clinician you should be knowing about occlusion as we all know no one occlusion is at a starting point or at a ending point it is at some stage of adaptation like you see the, the first picture on top is a ideal occlusion the last picture down below is almost flat teeth so each patient has an occlusion which is unique which is subjected to the conditions and it is a consequence of those conditions which is available in that mouth the aim of this presentation is to know normal occlusion or ideal occlusion and its adapted state since we are talking about full mouth rehabs and fixed dental process we will just have a brief introduction to when to actually attempt for a normal occlusion and how to do it when not to attempt to go to get an ideal occlusion or a normal occlusion when to stick on to the adapted occlusion and how to do it now that we know that this whole oral environment is a dynamic ever changing environment we should understand that planning anything in this system should be dealt with with utmost importance to functioning with harmony with the existing conditions now placing the processes is like the ideal marriage the ideal marriage between the properties of the restoration which is quite different from that of the teeth and the properties of the teeth as such this marriage is to succeed only if there is harmony between this non adaptive processes and the ever changing oral environment now what is this ideal occlusion that we are talking about this ideal occlusion means that there should be bilateral even contacts in the starting position now the starting position is usually centric relation so when most of the teeth come into contact there should be bilateral even contacts then there should be anterior teeth guidance or anterior guidance which means the anterior teeth disseclude the posterior teeth in all movements this results in stability stability in the sense less changes in the teeth over time which results in longevity now this video represents anterior guidance in protruding the mandible so in while protruding the mandible the anterior teeth disseclude the posterior teeth right so that the posterior teeth are designed to take up a vertical load whereas the anterior teeth are designed to take up angular load so if you give angular load to posterior teeth it is going to deteriorate if you are going to give vert- vertical forces to the anterior teeth the anterior teeth are going to deteriorate so this phenomenon of disseclusion of the posterior teeth while the anterior teeth come into contact is called christensen's phenomenon which is a protective mechanism this also happens during later protrusion of the mandible that is the canine disseclude disoc- all the teeth on the working as well as the non working side that is on both sides only the working side con- working side uh, canine touches so this also reduces the amount of lateral forces that are acting on the posterior teeth which results in better longevity of the restorations or better longevity of the teeth as such itself so now we'll go a little more technically there are three golden rules of occlusion which is the centric relation equates maximum intercuspal position the there should be anterior guidance and there should be unobstructed range of motion now i don't want to confuse all of you all i don't want to go into definitions of centric relation i don't but anyway now as far as occlusion is concerned centric relation is a home position of the mandible a home position of the mandible means all the movements of the mandible begin at the centric relation and all movements of the mandible end at the centric relation the centric relation is a stable position of the joint now we are always what our need is stability now the stability of the teeth alone is got by the even contacts and anterior guidance and the lateral guidance now the stability of the joint is got when you put the joint in its correct position which is a centric relation 
now in this centric relation is a orthopedically stable position which means the parts of the joint and the muscles together are in a state of stability now this video shows what happens when there is a mismatch between the maximal intercuspal position and the centric relation which happens to most of us which is an, uh, on average about 0.5 millimeters now this mismatch is to be corrected when it is more than 1.5 millimeters now why is it important centric relation to coincide with maximum intercuspal position one is because of the altered position of the mandible the mandible puts all the muscles at a state of stress which results in grinding of the teeth attrition uh, uh, separations parafunction of the muscles which results in wear of the teeth the other thing is also that patient tends to bite on the anterior teeth so that he eliminates the posterior interference now biting on the anterior teeth will cause attrition of the anterior teeth also which uh, comes back to the posterior teeth and the total attrition now excessive wear of the posterior teeth can also happen and instability of the muscles can result in in muscle pain and altered position of the uh, condyle in the joint which results in joint pain now we know that the normal or the ideal occlusion is stable now ideally speaking nephrologist attempt at providing this ideal occlusion for everybody which is not possible because of the various technicalities the extensivity of the uh, of the restorations and it is very invasive and the diverse nature of adaptation that has occurred in each individual so it is so it is judicious to actually choose which patients you have to go for a ideal occlusion and which patients you have to go for a adapted occlusion the remaining part of the presentation will deal with when you go for a ideal occlusion or when you when you actually establish a new jaw relation and how do you do it and when you don't go for a ideal occlusion or when you stick with the adapted occlusion and how do you do that so when do you go for a new uh, occlusion where the maximum intercuspation coincides with the centric relation the first point is when you have a loss of vertical dimension that is if the vertical dimension of the uh, patient is lost you want to increase the vertical dimension you will you, you will go for a new jaw relation or you will go for centric relation the second one is when you when the existing dentition is collapsed then you go for a jaw relation the third one is when you restore most of the most or all of the posterior teeth then you don't have any vertical stops then you are forced to go for a jaw relation or a new centric relation which coincides with the maximum intercuspation position now in these pictures you can see this these two pictures on the extreme left which shows that uh, reduced vertical dimension to restore the reduced vertical dimension they have established this new occlusion at a centric relation position the pictures on the top show that it is a collapsed occlusion so you will have to increase the vertical dimension so when you increase the vertical dimension then that has to be set at the centric relation position the photos on the right all the teeth in the upper arch has been prepared so you cannot actually use the already existing occlusion you will have to establish a new bite at the centric relation position now how do you do this to establish a new bite at the centric relation position you will have to establish two, two things one is the vertical height that you actually want to end up in and the horizontal position of the mandible which coincides with the centric relation position now usually whatever the definition says the retruded position of the mandible is recorded as a centric relation position so this is how i do it i keep a blob of light cured acrylic in the anterior teeth and i ask the patient to slowly bite on the posterior teeth so much so that they feel comfortable very slowly until until i see that the they have sufficient vertical dimension so this is mostly a clinical judgment and at that vertical dimension i cure that light cure material then keeping that as a jig 
I squirt some white registration paste and using chin point guidance I will retrude the mandible to the most posterior position ask them to bite on that position and that is my centric uh, relation record or that is my new jaw relation record which is used to set up this uh, new teeth there are other ways to record centric relation by uh, using deprogrammers like leaf gauge and loose edge jig retrude the mandible and position position it in the centric relation with the help of this uh, bimanual manipulation uh, suggested by dawson or chin point guidance as i told you before now here i would like to emphasize on the use of wax mock up which follows the ideal occlusion protocol and the use of temporary teeth these temporary teeth should also follow this ideal uh, occlusion protocol and i would suggest the use of temporary teeth for at least 4 months and see to that these temporary teeth are stable in the mouth so once these temporary teeth are at uh, attain some amount of stability they don't wear off they don't break they don't chip off that temporary teeth are provide are the best guides for the permanent teeth so that when you go for a restoration in such a manner you are sure to end up in a very stable permanent teeth or definitive restoration now this is a case where i had to go for a increased vertical dimension this normal vertical dimension of the patient was slightly less and most of the posterior teeth were uh, missing and uh, decayed and all that this is the normal bite that the patient first had now this is this is not a wax mock up but this is a temporary it is a mock up for the temporary restorations the posterior bite was slightly increased uh, since the anterior teeth were not restored now this was more of a temporary mock up which help to increase the vertical dimension and uh, give a trial on how it is going to work in the patient's mouth so the, those are the temporary that you see below which are made in that on the patient's mouth now that is a preparation and that is a final restoration now the final restorations were made nearly 3 months after the, the patient wore temporaries uh, you can see that on the right side the lower photograph you can see the amount of increase in vertical dimension that was provided since the Uh, teeth on the second and fourth quadrant were all uh, restored no the teeth on that side were in occlusion whereas the teeth on the opposite side were not in occlusion because it was slightly raised now this will uh, settle by itself because of the supra eruption of the lower teeth and once that is settled we will plan for a implant supported crown or bridge on the posterior teeth so that is how we go about restoring uh, teeth with fixed dental processes when you want to establish a new jaw relation now suppose you are now you are going to use the existing jaw relation when do you do that so when you are restoring or when you are replacing one teeth few teeth unilaterally you are restoring only anterior teeth when there's already satis- satisfactory amount of vertical dimension you have vertical stops sufficient vertical stops then you don't go for a new bite relation a new jaw relation you go for a bite registration now the this case on the upper only a lateral is replaced you don't want to disturb the existing occlusion you take a jaw you take a bite registration the case below unilateral implant uh, retained uh, bridge you don't want to disturb the opposing side patient is happy with the vertical dimension you go for a bite registration this patient on top you restoring only the anterior teeth the posterior teeth are in occlusion you have enough sufficient vertical contacts you don't need to go for a new jaw relation or you don't want to change the jaw relation the uh, the patient below most of the posterior teeth are being restored but the premolars and the canines they give good vertical support the amount of vertical support is uh, sufficient and the vertical jaw relation in the patients is uh, satisfactory keep you maintain that as a guide and you restore the posterior teeth keeping the anterior teeth as a guidance you don't increase the vertical dimension now this is another case where the patient had met with an 
road traffic accident leaf out maxillary fracture now one side of the maxilla was an occlusion the other side of the maxilla was not an occlusion now keeping the teeth on the normal side or the correct side as a guide all the other teeth were prepared and restored without an increase in the vertical dimension even in this case you don't go for a new jaw relation you go for a bite registration so how do you do a bite registration usually we do bite registrations with silicone or wax now where is a wax bite registration required or needed now wax registration with the modeling wax is of no use at all it is simply not needed or simply of no use because it is it can distort very easily the other one is silicone now making a silicone rester a silicone bite with putty is also of no use that too when you give it in the normal teeth there's a lot of rebound and which is also of not warranted the other important thing of bite registration is the extent to which your bite should extend now if you are restoring two teeth in the maxilla or the mandible anterior or posterior teeth it is very important that your bite registration material extends to only the prepared teeth not even a small amount of registration material should involve non prepared teeth of the same arch because that will uh, that will hinder the positioning of the casts because some amount of material between unprepared teeth will not allow the cast to be oriented properly even this uh, bite registration that you have seen here will be trimmed down so that you have only indentations on both the superior and the inferior side of the bite registration so that you actually get a correct orientation of the maxillary and the mandibular casts now there is lot of uh, requests on facebow and the uses of facebow in full mouth rehabilitations now a normal facebow cost you around 20000 rupees and using only a facebow without an art- without an articulator is not possible so with the articulator you'll have to shell out around 80000 rupees now what do you get out of a facebow now a facebow is a caliper like device which helps you to orient the maxilla to the cranial base or it helps to orient the maxilla similar to the face in the articulator so what it means is the maxilla in the articulator is in the same angle and tilt like how it is there in the patient the same angulation of the occlusal plane the incisor is in the same angulation like how it is in the patient and it is at the same distance from the condyle so what does this mean is the arc of rotation of the posterior teeth is same as what is the arc of rotation in the patient's mouth now how is that different from your normal articulation now your normal articulator the occlusal plane is almost horizontal always and uh, the distance from the condyle to the to any teeth follows is not is not same as what is there in the patient's mouth but it is somewhere near because this articulator is an average articulator which is made by taking averages from a huge population and it is somewhat close it is not very perfect the position of the anterior teeth because occlusal plane is always horizontal the angulation of the anterior teeth tends to be sometimes more proclined than what is there in the patient's mouth especially if the patient is having a steep occlusal plane suppose you are doing a complete denture on a normal articulator like this sometimes it will you will think that the teeth is actually more proclined and you will keep it relatively straight but when you take that straight teeth and put it in the patient's mouth it will actually look st- more retroclined in the patient's mouth that is a problem when using a normal articulator whereas in some a steep occlusal pain in a face bow mounted articulator will resemble the same angulation of the maxillary anterior teeth as it is in the patient's mouth now this articulator uh, should be kept in the museum especially for a full mouth rehab case now you should ask that uh, what is the other alternative of not using an facebow the what the facebow tries to do is it tries to orient the maxilla 
at the same position to the articulator the articulator tries to mimic the the movements of the mandible into the articulator now there's one method which bypasses this whole thing which eliminates the need for a face bow which eliminates the need for an adjustable articulator which is called as a functionally generated path technique for those who are interested you can please take a look at this uh, method first a blob of acrylic is taken and placed on the posterior teeth of the mandible or the prepared teeth as such and the patient is asked to bite on it now once the acrylic hardens this acrylic is taken out is trimmed uh, so that uh, the excess is removed and you form a table or a occlusal table on which you add wax not the normal type of wax this is called fluid resin wax or something that flows at mouth temperature now this fluid wax is placed in the patient's mouth again and the patient is asked to do all functional movements functional movements in the sense lateral protrusion protrusion centric bite chewing on it and all that and once this fluid wax flows at mouth temperature once that record has been recorded centric points are marked on the on this record and this record is actually a, a impression of all the movements of the maxilla this video represents the movement of the posterior teeth on lateral protrusion when the teeth has proper canine guidance the posterior teeth contact each other at only the biting position whereas in the medial and lateral protrusion movements disclude the posterior teeth suppose you imagine that the upper teeth has to be restored the upper teeth has been prepared you create a platform with acrylic on the upper teeth and you add wax on top of that then the lower teeth are moved in the both medially laterally and the protrusive motions and these motions cause the displacement of this wax in such a way that the wax does not interfere with any of the movements of the mandible now a cast that is poured on this wax pattern is a functional cast of the mandible it is not the anatomic cast that we normally have it is a functional cast of the mandible which includes all the movements of the mandible as well as the stationary position of the mandible any restoration that is uh, created or fabricated against this functional cast in the correct vertical dimension is bound to be free of any type of interferences whatsoever now to conclude the occlusal problems often go undiagnosed as we already discussed because most of the time we don't know it is an occlusal problem the second one is the occlusal stable occlusion is of prime importance because that's what makes us occlusion a long standing one an ideal occlusion is the most stable so we'll have to always or most of the time strive to get this ideal occlusion or somewhere near to it and to get that judicious use of mock up wax mock up and temporaries is highly advisable we should understand that most occlusions are at a stage of adaptation from the ideal occlusion and we should judiciously take decision whether to 
restore this adapted occlusion to the ideal occlusion or to keep it as such per se i would also like to include that this whole presentation applies to teeth on jaws which are having a normal tmj and normal tmj movements final disclaimer special attention was given to you simple words as 20 to 30 minutes is a small time to discuss the terminology is alone talking to you about a mutually protected canine guided museum and such terminologies will be very confusing in the short time so secondly this seminar covers most of the essentials of clinical practice that mostly involves decision making in case of full mouth rehabs and verification of those decisions in the lab work whether it has been taken into account or not and some part of the lab work which is involved in fabrication of the processes criteria which are not under the control of the dentist in today's clinical scenario were not discussed finally i would like to say that we become a good dentist if we are able to recreate such good smiles and functional occlusion for our patients and we become gods or at least next to god if what we create stands the test of time thank you ஞானம் விளைந்தது நல்லி செய் பிறந்தது புதுதாகம் படைப்பதாலே நானும் இறைவனே ஹே புதுதாகம் படைப்பதாலே நானும் இறைவனே திரளிலும் புரளிலும் ஸ்வரங்களின் நாட்டியம் அமைச்சேந்து ஆவும் நதியலை நான் மனம் திறந்து கூவும் சிறு கோயில் நான் இசை கலைஞன் என் ஆசைகளாயிரம் நினைத்தது பலித்தது